Five years ago, friends James Pittman and Mike Blythe started a business called the Airplane Factory together with their first employee, Vincent Tooley. Today, they produce more planes than anyone else on the African continent. Called the Sling, the plane is completely self-designed and they believe in its class enough to literally bet their lives on it, having twice flown it around the world. Now, they will attempt to fly a Sling to Europe that they hope to build in just seven days. As if this isn't risky enough, half of the crew have zero experience in manufacture of any kind. It's been five and a half years since Mike over here started developing a new aeroplane in South Africa. And it took four years to get the first aeroplane flying. We flew that aeroplane for 42 hours. We took it apart, we started building another one. Beautiful yellow aeroplane. In 2009, Mike Blythe and James Pittman flew the first sling around the world in a historic record-breaking journey. Though extreme challenge and adventure are what makes them tick, they are also proud South Africans who believed it was possible to develop an airplane in Africa that could hold its own with any in the world. In many ways, I think today represents the kind of culmination of that production process, because we have produced an airplane that we reckon complete beginners are able to build if they work hard as hell at it in a period of seven days. The reason Mike and James want to include inexperienced people in this challenge is to prove that not only can the airplane factory successfully manufacture their very own high-tech airplane, but that the kit they are marketing to the home builder is simpler to build than any other. All the parts for this kit are manufactured at the airplane factory premises, which is across the runway from the hangar where they're going to attempt to build a sling in seven days. During the design and development phase of the aircraft, we tried to find components that were already made that we could just incorporate into the design, but there was nothing that really suited us perfectly. And it was too much of a compromise to do that. So we designed and developed every single aspect, right down to the seats. Everything in the aircraft is unique. You can see where the seat lies now. Yes, okay. So, so it's an aeroplane which we think is one of the finest light aircraft in the world. And in order to prove that, Mike and I are going to fly the aeroplane that all of us today are going to build in the next seven days to Europe. I've never built anything in my life. Oh, have I? No, I'm building a plane that's going to fly from here to Europe. Just so that you know, we can't do this unless we, like, really go for it. And if we are running late... Mike, having had um, more experience at building Tuesday planes Europe, than James, exactly. better understands the it's nature of the challenge. Um, I don't think James emphasised it enough Personally, I think it's going to be very, very difficult for us to pull this off. It is not unusual for light aircraft to be sold in kit form. It is no different with the sling. Most aircraft manufacturers say that it takes plus minus 700 hours to assemble such an aircraft, but the conventional wisdom is that it actually takes at least twice that long, which would mean an impossible 20 plus hours of work a day for each of this 10 person crew. Mike and James are betting that the sling will indeed take only 700 hours to build from first rivet to first flight. We've got five men who are experts in building aeroplanes. We then have five women who have absolutely no experience at all at building aircraft. It wasn't intended necessarily to be that way. It just worked out that way, unfortunately, because all of the men are people who work in the factory. The bigger challenge that they have set is getting the inexperienced half of the crew up to speed so that they are able to make a meaningful contribution. To give themselves a fighting chance, they've pulled five of the best minds from their staff, including their manufacturing manager. Vincent and Tuli over there is the engine specialist. Vince knows more about the installation and the operation of the engine that this aeroplane uses probably than anybody else in the country. Vince also has the most hands-on experience on the sling of anybody here or in the world for that matter. Uh, the first time I met Mike was uh, in 98. Initially he worked with me um, assembling microride aircraft and later on he was working on Rotex engines so he really knows the engines very well 
And when the opportunity came up for us to employ him here in this business, I grabbed it. And really, to be honest with you, I do enjoy this job. I come without any experience, but now, almost I know everything. It's a special thing for me to, you know, work all these years with him. In my position now, I'm a manager in for this hangar. This is the final assembly, and then after that, it's going to the customer. So we have to make sure everything is safe to fly, as this is a very responsible job, because this is people's life. This for the wing. So wing straps and ailerons, file forward and seat. The first thing Vincent James do is find the right manual. Mike, who designed the aircraft, imagines that he can begin the build without one. I'm suddenly um, uncertain about which go, which ones go where. My dear experts, confused. <laughs> That's not allowed. My name is Nomfundak Ulu. I can barely pronounce my own surname. I am an entertainment editor of Movie Magazine, um, a mother of two boys, very cute little ones. I'm here to build a plane. I mean, how many people can say I've made a plane with my own hands? Now that I, now that I think about it, probably the best uh -huh. is for us to actually... Read this funny language here. Centif no, wrong, wrong manual. Mike Noir. Numfundo's delight at Mike's uncertainty says a lot about her mischievous sense of humor. Yeah, Mike is confused and Mike is an expert. But perhaps it's more a measure of the seriousness with which he has decided to approach this project. We're looking through the manual now. I'm worried about myself. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the best way is to go exactly according to the manual and not according to what's in my brain. So we're starting with that. The formula that they've got is double five, double seven. It's five guys and five girls building the aeroplane in seven days and then flying it to Europe in seven days. Now, to fly to Europe in seven days is actually a long way. It's got to be completely reliable. It's got to be able to handle all kinds of weather and all kinds of altitudes and temperatures and so on. So it really is a real challenge, which I think just confirms the confidence that they have in the, A, the quality of the design, which is now proven, and, of course, the quality of the construction that we're going to see happen here. So this, do you know how this works? It's so cool. So you put this thing in here, it's got a clicker or something, and you press. And then you put it into like a whole thing, and then you let go, and then it like sort of holds things together. The most difficult thing that they're going to have to deal with is having five completely inexperienced people, and trying to put those together into a coherent team that will all work together and not get in each other's ways, and get the stuff that has to be done early done in time so that things that take a long time, like for instance the sealing of the fuel tank, which can take 72 hours, that stuff has to be done and has to be done on time and finished if the airplane is going to be ready in time. Some of the inexperienced crew may indeed require a long learning curve, but others are taking to the build like fish to water. That one in first, then do that on the table the adjacent channel. to Mike and Numfundo, who are busy with the rear fuselage, James is building a wing with a team consisting of Mike's wife, Charmaine, and Dudu Matibula, who is the picture editor at the Times newspaper. Dudu over there, she's fast and she's very precise. She's an absolute natural. I mean, she just, she has a feel for these things. In 2009, one of our photographers brought a feature into the office of, you know, these guys, you know, building a small aircraft and flying it around the world. And it's something that I really envied and, and really liked. I've always had this passion and love for aircraft, so I'm very happy about this kind of experience and working with people who've been in the industry for a while. It's a shock to most people because they think that I'm very girly girly, but I, I also grew up like a tomboy around brothers. I like building stuff and breaking stuff and putting it together. <laughs> and putting stuff together is what it's all about. Not just the parts, but the teams as well, for without the enthusiasm of the crew, they will never meet the challenge. Apart from Mike and James's teams, there are three other teams assembling different parts of the plane. Swedish student Vega is helping Vince with the central fuselage. Jean is building the fuel tanks with old friend Bonnie and airplane factory secretary Sherry Lee, while Gareth is doing the electronics on his own. Ordinarily, of the 700 hours, we allocate 150 hours to the electronics in the aeroplane. Only Gareth can do the electrics. And that means essentially that Gareth has to do 150 hours of work in the next six days. That's, I think, 27 hours a day. So um, Gareth's got a hell of a job ahead of him. Already there's a sense of competition building as to which team is getting their section of plane together quicker. Perfect fit, you see. The wing is still the same it was when ours was almost nothing. 
I'm yeah. just Sorry. saying. Gareth, just take a look at this table and have a look at that table over there. And what is the immediate feeling that kind of comes to your mind, you know? I think that these guys are about fun, but they're about serious fun. <laughs> The point is, is building an aeroplane is a serious business and even though they're going to have fun doing it, they're going to do it professionally. And I think that they've also shown that they have the confidence in it to be prepared to fly it with minimal testing all the way to Europe. I mean we're making good progress, that's the inside rib on the wing and you can see that we've completed both the guide for the aluminium tube that twists and ultimately rotates the aileron around its axis over there so you can control the aeroplane. I'm happy to fly to Europe with this river here. Well done. <laughs> James is easy. You know, he admits when he's made a mistake and, you know, he's, he's a leader and I, and I like that in him. You know, sometimes I stand around with a tool in my hand and I ask him, James, what next, what next? And he looks at me and he's like, this chick, okay, we still have to drill some more holes. You probably won't need to drill out some of these holes, but if you need to drill them out, test each one, uh -huh. then drill them out. Put the, uh, the rivets in and you can rivet the whole, the whole wing, okay? Yeah, I just want to see the final product and see it fly. Not only will this crew be building an airplane together, but they will also be sharing meals and sleeping quarters at the airfield. With many of them being strangers to one another, there's a good chance that the atmosphere will become increasingly intense as the build goes on. But on this, the first evening together, spirits are high. As tools are downed on the first day's hard work, it becomes evident that many like to party. From the first evening, the alcohol comes out, setting the trend for those to follow. Gareth brings out his guitar and starts a song where everyone has to make up their own verse. With my feet up for a change in the view. Vince, still feeling a bit shy, skips his 15 seconds of fame. Well, Vincent can't speak. speak. And I'm having some wine. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody I could sing as well as I build a wing. <laughs> so I'm not really in a position to make good judgments now because I've had quite a number of beers. <laughs> Something that I am that I normally do when I get quite kind of stressed out. But I'm supposed to say if I listen to what Mike says, that we're behind and we're having trouble and maybe we won't make it and it's such a challenge. And But I am actually bloody delighted. I think we did unbelievably well. I mean, I also feel happy that we've got such a nice bunch of people doing this. I thought first day we we're gonna get to know each other, like, you know, group work and all that, but it's it was work from day one, the seriousness, uh, the commitment, the responsibility. And I really admire that from day one. I mean, it sets the pace for all the other days that are to follow. The tables were empty when you got here. Then the kit came, and now there are structures that look like planes. We've been seeing slings coming the whole day, and I'm thinking, we're building something just like that. And they're so beautiful. And not that expensive. I'm gonna buy one. Yesterday, there were two occasions when I was pissed off. At the start of the day, Dudu and Mfundu were late, but once we got going, it was okay. And then during the day, well, some of them sat out there for more than an hour, you know, just sitting out on the grass, chatting and smoking, you know, and I thought, Jesus, are we ever gonna get through this project if, we, if this is the start on the day one? Mike's concern is that failure of any team to achieve their daily goal will effectively mean failure for everyone. He's lacking because people keep coming to visit him and say hi, and then he stops working to chat to his friends. Nomfunda reckons if Mike can take unscheduled breaks, so can she. So if anyone's a slacker here, 
It is Mike himself. You know, I know that I said yesterday, take all the rest you want to, but I'm cancelling that. <laughs> <laughs> if we don't push really hard, we're not going to do it. Seriously. Much of the frame has been completed on the first day, so early on day two, the teams begin lining up and riveting the sheet aluminium skins into place. It is not all plain sailing, however. I'm quite distressed by the fact that actually quite often Dudu and Charmaine kind of point out the mistakes I've made and they're a step ahead of me. In this case, the part has already been riveted into place, so the offending rivets will have to be drilled out for the error to be corrected. James's team aren't the only ones having problems. Very, very, very frustrating. Because the holes don't line up. That means either the skin's not perfect or something. Uh, Vince, how, how often is this lot of holes here not fit? No, 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 this one must, must fit. I think we're in trouble. I think we've done something wrong. Oh, no, James Whitman's going to be so happy now. But Nomfundo needn't be too concerned. The wing department's problems are far from over. There seems to be a problem in wing paradise. <laughs> Where Mike, who is the king of doing this, who built this beautiful structure here, which looks like a plane, <laughs> was called to go assist. He is now, and, and oh, I know the word, and um, de closing. What, what's the word? <laughs> de clicking. Uh, yeah, de clicking, <laughs> because something was done incorrectly by James Pittman. Okay, let's go, guys. Team, let's get back again. Let's start clicking this bloody thing again. Apart from setbacks like this that occur when working too hastily, James is finding it difficult to strike a balance between the discipline that's needed to get the job done and maintaining an atmosphere that will enhance morale. I thought we were ahead, but now I'm like having doubts again because each of the other people in the workplace talk shit for 45 minutes to an hour a day to somebody and they're all talking shit to me. So I'm talking shit for 10 hours in a day. <laughs> you know what happened last night? I slept on the sofa. Nomfundo went to bed on the mattress next door. And did you know that from about an hour in, you were on the floor, like midway between my bed and your mattress? That's why she woke up. I saw the mattress and I'm like, where's Nomfundo? Are you insinuating? I'll try to jump into bed with you. I don't know what was happening, but you were crawling in my direction. <laughs> Can't believe you. <laughs> We have to line up this one, sir. Is Vince the guy who, who teaches people to do it? Vince, he's, he's a very bad teacher. He's, I mean, he's a brilliant... But he seems to know everything. He knows everything, but he doesn't like to teach. And in fact, <laughs> huh? he's recently adopted the attitude that if you want him to teach people, we have to pay him more. <laughs> yeah, but teachers don't get paid well in this country, huh? Exactly. We told him that. <laughs> Where's everybody? They went home or...? There's an old story of South Africa. No, no, There's no, the no. black man doing all the work and the white like sitting around talking shit. I can see this. I can <laughs> see this. We're going to change that it's, now. It's only me and uh, then, The foreigner. Yeah, and then we're working <laughs> together. The foreign woman. <laughs> Towards the end of day number two, Vince, who's generally quiet and retiring, begins to come out of himself. The thing is, we shot with the hand riveter. The air riveter, because the keep talking from the yeah, wing section. Stealing it from us, you know? We have it here, and then it just come and it just take it from us, yeah? That's the problem we have here. It's like yeah, me yeah. and Vince against the rest. It's like six of them, that's all. I mean, if they want a war, yeah. we're ready. Well into the second evening, spirits are still high, but fatigue is beginning to take its toll. What is that? No, I don't think we Come on, man, Shane. What are we gonna do now? Flip, man. Okay. <laughs> We've been working away at this flipping thing for a long time now. And she just oh, you get up like that. I mean, Who's come on. Who's that? I already will cry. I'm not, I'm not, I mean. Dinner time. Yeah. Dinner time. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Exhaustion is kind of trickling in at the moment. We have to drink our coffees. And, and I mean, the energy levels are still there and the willingness, it's just the body's starting to feel the pressure. All this for food.
Well, the situation is that we are now quite seriously behind. And the reason is because lots of people have taken too much rest, particularly a central person like James. I actually don't think we found <laughs> I think Mike is trying to whip up everybody into a frenzy so that we definitely don't fall behind. But what is difficult is to get people moving and the bigger the personality, the harder they are to get moving in the morning. <laughs> I said, yeah, this is like my little bed, my sleeping bag and stuff. No sheets, okay? This is a chick who lives in Morningside, which is very lonely in Jerburg. I'm a, I'm a Santon housewife, okay, who works for a living. Yeah, no, no, because she has a big personality, she has a, a substantial inertia. <laughs> so she instructed me to phone her this morning at 5 o'clock so that she can write an article for the magazine of which she's a sub-editor for 8 o'clock. While I was trying to sleep last night, someone brought this to me. And it's now 2 minutes to 7 and she's the one person who's still... Is it a real one? Dudu is also there. The two that are there are Dudu and, uh, and Nomfundo. And Dudu was really keen to fly. She was desperate to fly. So I wonder whether I shouldn't go and pick her up in the aeroplane of that hangar and fly her to work this morning. Last night, Dudu and Nomfundo moved their bedding from the work hangar to the hangar where Vince and Gareth were sleeping so that they could carry on drinking and chatting away from Mike's watchful eye. I'll come fly you to work. The fact that the two hangars are only 100 metres apart makes James's idea of flying Dudu to work questionable. Essentially, James needs very little excuse to climb into an airplane. You know, once James says, yeah, OK, I'm going to go and fly now and have some fun for a while, then everybody in that section goes and sits on the lawn and that affects mostly the girls because they were kind of all together and then they go and sit and chat and what have you. So. I have to think about how stern I have to be this morning with everybody, including James, or especially James. I'm not giving all the time. You know what happens when you the next person? You start to goof off, then everybody else starts to come and sit out on the lawn, and then yeah. nobody's well, working here. You think that's the reason you guys, but I'm also maintaining a kind of a, a happy environment and kind of no, trying of to make an assessment regarding who needs what? I know, but James, you know, we need a certain number of hours to get this thing through. Mm, but I mean, if we don't put this through ahead, if we don't, you know, we're going to finish on Wednesday at the moment. We, so we also want to have some fun. You know, we've got to get kids think, here. And I don't think we're going to finish on Wednesday, James. Mm, but Vince I, does, and he knows as well. He's also quite strong at this kind of thing. Okay. But shall I, shall, I, shall I drop that? My idea. No, you can do that. I don't <laughs> okay, mind, okay, James. Okay. But I mean, you know, y y y we, we've got to work 12 hours a day. Yesterday, a lot of people took two or three hours off during the day. So, I mean, then, you know, you times that by eight or whatever it was, that's like 20, 30 hours of lost work, just like that, because we're 10 people. So you, everywhere takes an, an extra hour. That's, you know, 10 hours gone. So we'll find a nice balance between the two. <laughs> <laughs> OK, no time off today for you. OK. I mean, I was a bit angry, but, uh, you know, uh, that's James. I love him like that, you know. He brings a certain sparkle into everybody's life. So, um, but, but when you've got a job to do, a serious job like this, with real time constraints, then you've got to muck in. There's no time for buggering around and, you know, playing the fool. Another drain on precious build time is that Dudu and Nomfundo have to service the publications that they work for. I think it's something that I have to do as well to cover my ass for the office, you know. The stuff that pays the bills is coming first. Meanwhile, things are coming along in the hangar. We're just about finished with the rear fuselage. Apart from this piece, we're going to join the rear fuselage onto the centre fuselage part, which Vince has been working on. That's quite a major step. Oh. I'm an entertainment editor of a magazine that sells 140,000 copies a week. I manage four journalists, and we do the cover story, the cover, all the gossip pages. So we do all the entertainment, which actually sells the magazine. And me not being there, it's the first time I've not been at work to sort of run things. And I'm stressing because we're going to bed tonight and 35 pages are missing. And I'm here building a plane. Having joined the rear and the center fuselages, we're attaching the skins that attach the back to the front, you know? So um, I doubt everybody's going to be happy, but we'll see. We'll catch up though. I, I, I think once we sort of done with this sort of stuff, like work stuff, we will catch up because we are willing to put in the extra hours. So there's no stress, guys. It's all like chill. 
That's it. And this one, Mike left this one. Mike is left there. He told me not to do that. Mike no, no, asks okay. Dudu and Numfundo to take a break from their media work to attend the morning meeting. I'll tell you why it doesn't look like we're behind, but why we are behind is because um, what we needed to do in the beginning was we needed to get as far ahead as quick as possible. Because once the fuselage is finished and standing there, there's only three people that can work on it at once. We can't have, not everybody can work on it. It is becoming increasingly important to the success of the plane's construction and to the safety of Mike and James as its first pilots to keep everyone motivated and focused. We have to be very, very precise because all the, all the, almost all the failures that occur on this size aircraft are on the engine installation and the electrics and that sort of thing. And that, it has to be, and, and Vince is like the specialist on that, and it's a very slow, precise job. You have to check every tiny little thing. I mean, Mike and I are going to be flying this plane over the deserts in Africa and then across the Mediterranean and so on. So it is the extent to which we are able to kind of focus and keep our minds on the job and do it right and not make a single mistake. Because it is a case of a chain is as weak as its weakest link, you know. If one thing goes wrong, we're going to go down. Yeah? The real issue with this project is not so much completing the build on time, but rather the quality of the work, as it literally is a matter of life and death. You know, it's been messy because um, we always have like two glasses of wine before we go to bed and then it ends up being seven and we all pass out and we have to get up early and there is no time we actually define where you're supposed to be doing work for the office and filing for them. So <laughs> I've been sitting there typing myself, I've been dozing off. The next thing I see is like, look. <laughs> How did it work? <laughs> I really think that building this airplane is a big enough task. And um, today I was trying to determine how to strike the balance. It, it's like I'm doing three jobs at a time. I feel so torn because, I mean, the rest of the team is here and they're working and they're riveting and drilling. And it's, it's really like, you know, tedious work and you actually want more people to be on it so it can be done quicker. But now it, it looks like we're slacking off when we're busy. No fun, no. Tired. Later that evening, the ever-growing exhaustion is taking its toll even amongst the most experienced members of the crew. <laughs> In their inspections, they didn't notice that there was a key component missing. I mean, can you believe it that we both missed this? The wing skins will have to come off again. The thing is, I'm feeling bad because I feel like tired and I think that we plans for today didn't happen. Vince and I are about to put the front on the cage on. We planned we're going to put the landing gear today on. I think that's the wrong one. Just this is the wrong thing. Yeah, I think we have to call wow. it. It didn't happen because engine mounting something wrong there on the engine mount. See, I'll make a suggestion. I think we should tidy up hit the set. It's been a hell of a long day. Everyone is really tired. So I just want to get some sleep and rest. Maybe I can come fresh tomorrow morning. Yeah, I think we're all understanding that maybe, just maybe, we can't go on 12 hours a day non-stop. Because you get tired and you start like thinking properly and you're not as logical as you were in the morning, for example. Like right now, stupid mistakes have been made and we're going to need to resolve them tomorrow because people are exhausted. There is a saying often quoted by airplane builders that goes, 90% done, 90% to do. During the second half of the build, the less experienced members of the crew begin to realize this, fueling a frustration that increases with their exhaustion. Perhaps because of this, after more hard days of pulling rivets, they begin to party harder. Mike is going to have a job on his hands to get airborne before the seven days are up. Today will be the halfway point of the build. James arrives early to ensure that the party right. girls are on time for a change. The just left to work is here. Yesterday, I went to work on an aeroplane to down a motorbike. There's a lot of catching up that needs to be done if they're going to make the seven day deadline. Everyone's going to have to pull their weight. Uh, yeah, I slept for like four hours, but. Four hours? Yes. What did you do? I mean, I'm sleeping with, in a hangar with these like women, and we're talking about our boyfriends and our, you know, about love, about a lot of issues. and. So, yeah, and our crushes and all that stuff. Ooh. I'm not going to tell you about that, not getting that information. 
On this, the fourth morning, the increasing exhaustion hasn't dampened some of the crew's will to party. But miraculously, James manages to get the two worst culprits to work punctually for the first time. You can see it started early today. It's not like uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday. It was like started like nine o'clock. No, but I made this space, man. No, but like this is Why also my space. I can't walk on the. I can't. I can't work. No, but like, I came here first. Getting down to work, however, is another story no, entirely. Some descent in the ranks over there, you know. But I think it's just uh, getting rid of some of the stresses, you know. No, these are mine. These are mine. No sooner in the workplace than Numfunda finds an excuse to lure Dudu away from work. Anything for a bit of fun to kickstart the day. Lomfundo's extrovert nature is one of the main reasons for including her in this challenge, but striking the right balance between work and play gets more critical as the build progresses. I actually didn't know until just now that we were actually making the seat because... Having completed the main structures like the wings and fuselage, the crew start on the more detailed parts that require greater skill and concentration. Yeah, the inside mechanism... That was the part that really got us. There's a little latch here. There's a whole intricate little mechanism inside here that we put together about five times before we got it right. Meanwhile, the fuel tanks are being pressurized to test for leaks. Any one rivet in this can leak, so we've got to literally check every rivet, every corner. Because this is part of the wing, after we've checked it today for leaks, we rivet that on. And um, if it leaks if we if we don't pick up a leak now and it leaks afterwards it means we've got to unrivet the whole thing and this little sensitive pressure gauge will show us if the pressure drops if it doesn't leak we we'll zap them on and we can put the wings aside ready to go on probably on thursday morning right okay okay let's go oh, yeah. lifted vince though this was scheduled for last night getting the sling on its wheels means they are truly into the next phase of the build just that once the wheels are on the engine can go on which is technical work, which Vince over there is best qualified to do, and he couldn't start until the engine was on, essentially. The installation of the engine must be meticulous. As Mike well knows, any mistake okay. could spell disaster. I trusted my life to this engine on many occasions, flying around the world over oceans at night, in storms, flying in an open cockpit aircraft across the Arctic, and if the engine stopped at any point, you know, that would have been me dead but haven't had a problem. And the nice thing about these engines, like when we fly up through Africa, you can't always get good fuel. So what we did when we were flying the trikes before is go and get the cheapest fuel you can buy and put it in and the engine just keeps going and going and going. They are so solid, these things. What we're going to struggle to do now is to keep all of the kind of less technical people busy. These skins can go on, the skin can go on under the undercarriage. They will do all of that kind of Large scale, not technical work, but the, the technical guys can only start now. That's the big difference. Dudu's just received a call about a problem with her son that she needs to go and sort out. No, my son broke his asthma pump, so he's gonna need it, I know. Because of the new phase of the build, Mike and James can afford to lose her while they work out everyone's new duties. You know, there's a saying when you're building an aircraft. 90% done, 90% to go. So when you think, geez, I'm just about finished, then suddenly you find you're working for another three or four months on the aircraft, you know? That's why I've been a bit panicked. Sharks, now I'm freaking out. There's still so much to do. There really is. What about the canopy? And the seats? Hello, and... what do you think this is? you know how difficult this is? This, um, I think Jean's going to bake it tonight. But it's a lot of work, it's so easy to mess up. Jean is an invaluable asset to the airplane factory as he can work his way around any problem. His canopy design is an example of this. There are only a handful of places in the world that are able to shape such a specialized canopy and the airplane factory is one of them. We've done a lot of effort to try and make it quick for production. Previous ones, each one is handmade and tweaked. Take about two days just to do the canopy. I'm going to do the canopy in probably, hopefully, about six hours. So it'll be a little bit now and then a bit more tomorrow. I must bond it tomorrow to be able to fly. It is a critical stage of the build. As if essential parts like the canopy and the fuel tanks are not finished on schedule, the bonding, which can take a day or two, will not be dry enough for the sling to be airborne before the seven days are up. Fitting perfectly. Sure it's going to be perfect. 
Here you go. Landon. Absolutely fabulous seats here, made by these four women over here. Totally inexperienced, <laughs> making a seat of this kind of quality. It is actually a tribute to the kit, because I mean, when you look at these four faces, they'd never even seen an aircraft up close on Friday last week. There's been a lot of bad behavior and drinking, and they managed to be seats like it says that it must be a hell of a kit. One thing that's been really great for me to see is the girls coming into their own on the technical side. You know, I've seen uh, Dudu and Nomfunda building a flap from scratch. Beautifully, perfect flap, better than anyone in the factory could have done it. In the beginning, they didn't know what a Clico was, what, what a drill was, really. And I mean, now, now you can sort of say that, okay, get that, 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 and that, a, a 3.2 rivet gun, a 3.2 drill, etc. And they're even getting to the point now where they're sort of opening up the parts, laying it out, and, and doing a lot of the thinking themselves, which is excellent. So, yeah. although our sh we, we feel we, we're behind, if we can keep up the pace now with them advancing like that, I'm sure we're going to make it. But almost like clockwork, with every advance, there seems to be a great disaster that puts the build in doubt. I've just grown a little thing on my lip. Can you see it? I'm scared of going to the mirror. Is it big? You know, it can be a virus or something. It's Fever blisters are often attributed to stress. And though Nomfundo seems to take everything in her stride, I think it's going to start leaking. Of course, some water building up in it. There's little doubt that the steadily increasing time pressure is starting to affect everyone. Your friend with the blister is still your friend. Have a glass of wine. I think I should actually have some wine. I miss my family very much, actually. Now, my son um, had show and tell. He has show and tell every Tuesday. I wasn't there to sort of like catch things up with him. So it's a bit weird. But, you know, yeah, life has to be glad. I'm seeing them on Thursday, though, so I'm quite excited. Adding to the stresses of this challenge is being separated from family. But on Thursday, in two days' time, on the last evening the crew will spend together, their families have been invited to experience what their loved ones have been up to for the past week. Right now, however, there's a lot of catching up that needs to be done. Yeah. Four all the way. Okay, so I do that. Tell you know what is nice to see. It's 10.30. And we've had a bunch of guests, and he's been talking quite a bit, but everyone's back at work, man. Going for it, like properly. Non fundo, duty, vega, But we are giving it a, a good talk. It's now 20 past one in the morning, and we've just stopped, and Gareth is starting the night shift. Gareth is going to work through the night. Jean is going to work too late, but not through the night because he's going to glue the canopy on tomorrow night. I think everybody's feeling bullish, but tired. Okay. Because of the amount of time they've lost, Not everybody. it has become necessary for certain experienced members of crew to work through the night. The rest are exhausted. What a day. Do you realize that Gareth is still working? Gareth has spent all night wiring the instrument panel into the sling. The high-tech main instrument is manufactured in Cape Town. Look at that, it's booting up. That is an MGL voyage, eh? Starts perfectly every time. <laughs> this instrument, it is the best instrument in the world. You know? It does what an Airbus A380 does at about one, like a thousandth of the price. But reliability is not really a strong point. <laughs> this is how much bigger my thing is. I put my cream on. Look how big it is now. Jesus. I wanted to must pop it, but I'm too scared to. Oh, yeah. It's not interfering with your talking. Sorry? It's not interfering with your talking. No, no, never. No, no, no. no, 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 no I think we're going to do that. <laughs> I just had a piece on my tongue. It may look like nothing but fun for a person as extrovert as Nomfundo. But in reality, it's not so simple for single mothers to go on their own mission without their kids. As the day goes on, Dudu in particular has been on the phone desperately trying to make sleeping arrangements for her son. Both having baby drama issues. You know, the kids from outside relationships and the men are very unreasonable sometimes. They just never want to see us happy. Dudu and Numfundo's situation is not uncommon. Women-led single-parent families, though already at alarming levels, are on the increase in South Africa. The 
Yeah, now Judah's baby daddy has dropped the child off at the girlfriend's home and she has no access to the child. She's just trying to call to speak to her son and the dad won't give her the girlfriend's number or anyone's number so she can't talk to her own child. Two days now. When I asked him for um, access to my son, he says to me that it's, you know, I decided to come here. It's not his problem. And, um... And what do you think the best solution is? I mean, what do you, what do you plan to do? Pardon? Do you think that you're going to have to drop the bills and, and pull out at this stage? Yeah. So now I have to go get my son from his place. I'm going to sleep at home. I'll take him to school in the morning and be back here. Because I'm not about to dump this for this idiot. <laughs> <laughs> we are very sad to lose Judy just for the night. She's going away for the night. She's going to look after her son. But she's back again tomorrow morning. First thing, you're going to make me cry. Mm -hmm. There's no way to get around it. Dudu is going to have to leave the build to take care of the situation with her son. The rest of the crew will have to share her work until she returns. While Jean greets the dawn after an all-nighter working on the canopy, hey, a nice new day. attempts to get Nomfundo to work on time nets only Sherry Lee, who ended up drinking with Nomfundo till the small hours. With both Dudu and Nomfundo missing, the rest of the girls take their time getting down to work. OK, when you girls are ready, we've got work for you. We're desperate. Nomfundo says that... Um, Thanks for the wake-up call, but she'll see you at nine when she's ready. No, did she really say that? Yeah. Well, the thing is, you know... OK. What can I say? She's a volunteer. And I have to deal with that. Nomfundo is sleeping. Dudu is I don't know where. Well, I do get a bit agitated and, like, pissed off, to be honest. So... Halfway between the two. I don't know. I can't say I'm that irritated because, like, I'm sitting out falling half asleep. But at least I kind of made the effort to, like, wake up. <laughs> yeah, I'm so bitchy. <laughs> what happens is if we don't have everybody working the full 12 hours a day, then suddenly we land up, like, a few of us working, like, through the night. Like you. She fought with me this morning because she said I didn't wake up. But I woke up, like, ten times. I wake up and go to work. I'm so tired and I'm not feeling well. With Dudu still absent and Sherry Lee and Nomfundo making up their own rules, Mike feels powerless to enforce discipline. Seriously not happy. Yeah, I'm not feeling well. Nomfundo's excuses aren't convincing. Like, this, this thing. That sounds like a shit excuse to me. Mike is not sure how to deal with her blatant truancy. I can tell you, I'm very happy she doesn't work for me. So I know he is not saying what he wants to say, you know. I disagree about the fact that somebody's a volunteer, you can't say something because the fact that you are a volunteer means that you've committed to throwing your weight behind something. Okay, guys, lunch is served. Someone's lack of input could be the difference between making this thing on time and not. Everybody come for lunch, excepting you and Fundu. No lunch break for you. You're working through the night tonight with us. And especially no more wine. I really think you need to be in tip-top condition to work on this very special <laughs> sling. Uh, I would hate to um, jeopardize that by being tired. Or... That's why I'm all sleep. tired, darling. Numfundo continues yeah. with her litany of excuses. Yeah, Some of us know how important this is to finish. Though her bubbly personality and wit win over most situations, some of the crew are beginning to lose patience. I didn't know what time it was, actually. The thing is, it's difficult to know whether Numfundo is being serious or not. This was not working out for me. I think it's because I took leave from work, and psychologically, I was hoping to get some rest. You know, I haven't taken leave since forever. And now we're just constantly working hard. Oh, come on. What did they tell you? Oh, you're going to build an aircraft? It's like holiday. You're just going to have cocktails and lay on the grass? I was hoping that like there'll be some of that. There's none of that. It's just a like, constant drilling, riveting, kickoing. It just doesn't end. 
Hey, Dudu didn't even say hello. Dudu returns around lunchtime after sorting out her domestic hassles. It's a full crew again, but they have a lot of catching up to do. I'm working very hard here on the engine, the most important part of the plane. So I need to concentrate because if I mess this up, it could be a serious problem, you know? Tightening bolts just to make sure James and Mike are safe. That is quite something. I don't want to be nasty or anything, but the very idea of leaving my safety open to Nompundo's tightening of bolts. Vincent will be checking and redoing everything after me. <laughs> redoing? No, no. I like the sound of that. <laughs> redoing. I don't check. Vince, would you mind actually just redoing it first and then checking? He's so strict. Eh? Vince is the strictest person I've ever worked with in this entire thing. And he pushes me. Like, do it. Do it now. You can do it. Do it. Now, the thing is, you see, if I can do it, she can do it also. Yep, I agree with that. Yes. <laughs> the factory where everything is made is just down across the roadway down the lawn there. And um, suddenly it's lunchtime and all the guys from the factory have walked over. Now these guys here are the guys that have made every single part that we put in together. And if it flies on Friday, then... Uh... Then you, then you get, to, get to keep your job. Yeah. The factory workers have taken a keen interest in the build because they don't believe it's possible to build a sling in so short a time, especially where half the team have no experience and some are doing as little as possible. Vince! So I'm trying to hide He's away. I enjoy working with him. Yeah, He's he works really so hard, eh? He doesn't he does. let you stand around. Like, he gives you task after task. And it's yeah. manual labor, you know? I mean, it's hard work. It is. <laughs> I'm going to hide behind the wing there, so Vince doesn't see me. Day six of the build was the best so far. Everything went according to plan, and the crew were able to make up most of the hours that they'd lost. Uh, we are very fortunate to be where we are today due to overnight work by John and Gareth. If it was left up to Nfundu, <laughs> it would have been a 17-day build. <laughs> I think if we all keep pulling our weight, I think eight hours of all ten of us, which means uh, I'll fly off to lunch tomorrow, like we originally planned anyway. So it also raises the other question, who's going to fly it? Because I'm sure Jean is desperate, so am I, and so are you. So are you. Yeah. It doesn't matter who flies first, but I think I have to go first, and then if something wrong there, I can fix it. <laughs> Everyone's in high spirits, because tonight is the night that they're going to be joined by their families, and for once, Dudu and Numfundo won't have to worry about where their children are. OK, everybody, could we have a moment of silence, please? For the first time in the last six days, could everybody, including Norm Fundo, shut up? Yeah. <laughs> first of all, it's our last night together as a family on the hill where we don't have the world here. I think that uh, we're allowed to have a couple of drinks tonight, aren't we, Mike? Mm. Basically, yeah. because the only thing left to do tonight is to put the wings on the aeroplane, which basically is just an afterthought. I mean, that's pretty easy to do. And the propeller, the wings and the, and the cow. propeller. And then there's the car. And test the electrics. Get the paperwork done. <laughs> Do the weight and balance. Do the weight and balance. Put the, put the registration letters on. <laughs> oh, all, well, this is all good reason to have a few drinks. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, okay, three, go! With the wing and fuselage sections now complete, Lift it a bit, James. their joining together is a big moment in the build. I'm very proud of the team. Woo! This is the first time in the entire process of building the sling okay, there go. that we've done something oh, literally oh, all together. It's just so emotional because it's, wow, the plane's complete. Wow. Wow. It is the surest sign yet that they may actually do it in seven days. What do the, what do the guys at the, at the factory think about us building a plane in a week? They say it's look like a... Uh, they must go home and stay home because they can't make their plan in a week. And as we did it. Tell me, what did you think before we started the project here? Before, when he told me we're going to put the plan in seven days, I was a little bit scary. I was, I was totally not going to make it. Uh, is it? But after we started, uh, I was positive going to do it. Because if he was walking around like some of our team here, because some of them, I'm not going to mention the names. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to mention the names, but some of them. I worked on the wings. What? So I'm very proud. We made the win together, you and I. 
Which one do you want? Do you, do you want the pink one? The latter. No, the one. It's the first time I've actually ever been up this early while doing this. <laughs> because oh, yeah. my son was here. Mike, I'm up. Amazing. <laughs> Are you ready to work, baby? Yeah, almost. Well, my car. Not work, it. Work. <laughs> <laughs> it's just all sad that everyone's going back home tomorrow and, you know, it's back to normal again. It's yeah. my first big, big person camp where I meet people I don't actually know except for two people, actually. I knew, I knew Dudu and James. And I've made friends and I don't really want to let that go. The plane came in this, and now it's a fully fresh plane that could race this thing any time, well, soon. Mike must be really confident that the build has come to an end, because the staff from the factory have come to collect most of the tools. Actually, this is all our stuff. We just borrowed them so that they can do their <laughs> thing. So now they are finished. We're taking our things all the way. So do you think these guys have showed you up that you can build an aeroplane quicker than you guys do? Actually, yeah, in a way, they've taught us something. But then from now on, we're going to be building something like two a week. <laughs> two in seven days. They've just built one there, so we're going to be doing two That's a week. That's desperate, but then you won't sleep at all. Oh, well, we'll sleep a long time when we're dead, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> we are. We have power. <laughs> Your pump. Hey, we got a fuel pump. Fuel pump. Lights. lights. Yay, lighting lights. lights. Strobe lights. Yes. Yes. Perfect. We have no red things flashing. Backup yeah. battery. Yeah, yeah. For once, Nomfundo can relax without having to find an excuse, as only the more technical members of crew can finish off the last few tasks. Later in the afternoon, a critical problem appears with the main instrument, which brings out the differences between James and Mike's characters. We, we, do, we do have a problem here. The, all of the sensors from the engine, which measure the cylinder temperature, the oil temperature, all of the readings are totally out of range. You know, my kind of approach, these engines are so bulletproof, I'd virtually just say, without any, without any instruments for fun, you know? Um, but I know Mike would have a very different view from that. Yeah, you know, you compromise too much with your flying, at some point you yeah, die. Crash. <laughs> no, you die, that's it. No, uh, you know. But also you bugger up this engine. Well, I mean, you bugger up the engine, sees. you smash the plane, you ruin our reputation, <laughs> you know, and just for an ego thing, you know. It's not worth it for me. But, no, uh, hard, hard to answer to that. <laughs> with the end of the day fast approaching, the public start arriving to witness the wonder of the seven-day airplane in flight. Desperately trying to fix the problem, they make trips back to the factory to fetch tools they thought they'd long since finished with. Outside, the atmosphere is growing more festive, but Mike realizes there's no way that Gareth is going to fix the problem before sunset. But he's also made a realization that will still allow them to meet their seven-day deadline. We've got until seven o'clock tomorrow morning to be within the seven days. So we just got to get the oil pressure working. Anybody wants to come tomorrow morning before seven, we're going to fly it. We're going to move down from this fantastic hangar where we've all been living like Big Brother. Though they were confident that they'd be able to sort the problem out quickly, the team celebrations were premature. He's our PR lady and entertainment. Gareth, whose job it was to fix the problem, didn't get to the party and eventually went to bed admitting defeat. It looked like they weren't going to make the deadline. What happened is we had the party last night and I was exhausted, so I went to bed early and when Shalmane came to bed at about two, I suddenly started thinking, but haven't we had this problem before? Because I haven't really slept much at all. But, you know, I really wanted to so desperately make the seven days, you know, and I've got an hour to go. So I'm feeling pretty bullish right now. I actually feel a bit bad for Gareth because um, this is, you know, 
He's, I'm sure he's going to just kick himself if it is the problem. Come on. Ah, oil pressure. Oil pressure, oil pressure, oil pressure. Yes! Five to seven. Morning. I've been working since half past two, and one minute ago, I sorted the problem out, and I just started the engine. Okay, this is it, guys. We've got 30 seconds. He's got to just get off the ground, I think. Wow! Guys, that's not really a high-speed taxi. It's called flying. What? Room nuts. <laughs> I've got one room nut. Wait! wait, wait. wait. <laughs> I mean, I went home last night in total dejection, you know? I mean, I'm not a loser, you know? I wasn't going to leave this place until all was lost. And everything was, we were not going to make it. You know, I told everyone, let's come back on Sunday. And then Mike Blythe wakes up at two in the morning. And shit starts happening. They beat the clock by a matter of seconds, and the sling was ready for the next challenge, its flight to Europe. But what did the volunteers take away with them? When I was getting exhausted and other people are still going, they're still going, it's commitment. Really, it's got nothing to do with physical strength. It's just that drive and willingness and, you know, it's something that has really resonated with me, that I need to do that in my life. So it's commitment for me. That's what I'm taking away from all of this. I'm going through quite a lot of issues at work and I'm just thinking, if I could help in doing this big thing that just happened over seven days that people take months and even years to do, why should I stay in a depressed environment? I'm just gonna work hard at other stuff so I can be happier. Yeah. Mike and James should be very, very proud of, of this achievement, that they pulled a couple of people together, it never fell apart, nobody walked out on them. They never questioned themselves if it's gonna happen in the end or not. So they've got beautiful spirits and they've got that drive, you know, and I really admire that in them. I mean, if you could do this, you could do anything.